Hello and welcome to Gusweta Business School's web chat series. My name is J. Michael Moore and I work with the communications office here at Gusweta. Today we're going to be talking about the evening MBA program and the executive MBA program, which we'll find out there are two flavors of that that I'm sure these ladies next to me will be happy to explain. So to begin, I'd like to introduce our chat participants for today. We're sitting to my left is Kathleen Edwards. Kathleen, if you'd like to introduce yourself and say a little bit about what you do. Sure. Uh, my name is Kathleen Edwards. I've been at the Gwizweta Business School for about six, seven years now, um, exclusively with the Evening MBA Admissions Committee. I'm actually a proud graduate of the Evening MBA program as well, um, but work as well with our um, full-time and executive teams in, in the admissions office. Thank you very much. And then to my far left is Larissa Hepstein. Uh, Larissa, would you like to explain uh, your role and then a little bit about the Ember program uh, and your involvement there? Sure. Uh, my name is Larissa Epstein and I work with the Executive MBA Admissions Committee. So I work with our Executive MBA prospects who are interested in either a weekend or the modular format and we'll talk about both of those formats a little bit in a little bit more detail uh, a little later. Well great, well before we get started I wanted to take a moment to recognize some breaking news here at Gusweta. We don't often get to mention things like this, but I'm happy to say that we have announced a new dean that will be taking over in July. Her name is Erica Hayes James, and she'll join us from the Darden School of Business at the University of Virginia. You should be seeing a slide now, or there'll be a paired slide to your video that will get sent out after this presentation. Uh, Erica was uh, head of the executive education program at Darden, a uh, program that is ranked very highly, in fact, number one in the country by the Financial Times. Uh, she was also an assistant professor here at Gosweta from 1998 to 2001 and is now a very well-known researcher in the space of crisis management and women in business and other leadership issues and she's a professor at Darden. We're very excited to have her and she'll start on July the 15th and there'll be more to come about her and, and her involvement with students so we're all very excited about that. Now to move on to the evening and executive MBA programs, what we call MBAs for working professionals. Uh, there are many aspects of this that are the same throughout the programs, and I'll let uh, Kathleen and Larissa comment on these. Beginning with world-class faculty, intimate learning, global opportunities, the exclusive network that comes here with Gosweta, and also the career support. But most importantly, there's an immediate ROI that I think working professionals can certainly realize. Kathleen, Larissa, would you like to add your comments there? Um, sure. So uh, the, um, <laughs> <sorry>. <laughs> the the MBA programs have become more and more accessible over the last several years, and so um, the ability to continue advancing in your career while also continuing your education is just such a wonderful opportunity to do um, to do that without interrupting your career. Uh, so. Um, yeah, <laughs> so I think one of the one of the things that uh, you get with the executive MBA program as well as with the evening program is that what you're learning in the classroom you can take back to your work almost immediately. So if, if there's any concept that uh, you have a question about from work, you can also ask the faculty during the program and go back and apply it uh, the next day. So that's one of the biggest differences between the full time MBAs and the MBA for working professionals. Great lead in to that, ladies. I would also like to take this direct time to recognize the rankings of all of our programs here at Gusweta. If you come to Gusweta, you are getting a well recognized business school and a well rewarded business school for all the great work that has happened here. You'll see this slide with all the current rankings of our MBA program, specifically highlighting the evening and executive MBA. And I'm proud to say we're one of the only a few handful of business schools who actually have top 20 ranked programs in all the major MBA flavors uh, and that's something that we're very proud of and something that you can tap into as being a part of this community. I'm going to go ahead and advance the slide. There might be a slight delay but we're now going to move in to talk specifically about the evening MBA program which Kathleen leads recruiting for. Uh, Kathleen, uh, very uh, excited to hear about this. I know I, I have uh, looked at the program. You are a graduate mm -hmm. of the program. Uh, it can be done. A lot of people uh, <laughs> yeah. would like to say mm -hmm. that, oh wow, it's so hard to go back to school mm -hmm. and things like that, but uh, there's a lot of flexibility in this evening program and, and we're very happy to share that. Sure, absolutely. Um, so the slide you'll see on, to the right of the screen um, is 
basically the overview of what we deliver and how we do that. But to step back a little bit, the Evening MBA program is such a fantastic um, setup because it's designed to give you the full MBA experience through the network, the cohort structure, the collegial atmosphere in the classroom, the high level of um, quality in terms of the academic uh, resources and delivery, but on a part-time schedule so that you're continuing to work and continuing to advance in your career, but not sacrificing anything in terms of your business education. Um, so you'll see on the portion of the screen with the chart the what we're delivering to you, and that's your core courses plus your electives plus your co-curricular module. And this curriculum was designed by our faculty with input from our students, our um, alumni, but also recruiters and future employers to make sure that our students are graduating with the management and decision-making skills that effective um, MBA graduates are expected to have, but also above and beyond that in terms of critical thinking um, and analysis. So your core courses are designed to deliver the fundamental business knowledge that everyone needs to know and then advance that to a higher level of um, management awareness in terms of the ability to ask the right questions, make those effective decisions, and know what you need to know. Even if you're not an accounting expert, you need to know what you need to know for accounting and uh, to manage that side of a piece or marketing and vice versa so that you're including that big picture perspective in all your decision making. So your core courses um, then are built on, upon by your elective courses, and you get to choose from over 90 different electives in the Evening MBA program and have the ability to choose even up to two concentration areas. So you could delve deeply into a particular area of finance that you already have some experience in and would like to advance into, and then complement that with maybe marketing or an organization and management concentration to, to complement those different skill sets. Um, and try some new things, challenge yourself, but also certainly develop um, a bit of a specialty to be very effective um, in your future workplace or current even more. Um, the co-curricular modules you'll see are those extra pieces that we feel are really developing um, graduates that are going on to be global business leaders. So management practice, um, you'll hear us talk about in all of our MBA programs but in the evening program is delivered as a co-curricular module on top of your two, your core classes each term so that you're using the new knowledge you're developing in your core classes adding that into essentially a consulting project that's a term long um, with a real client with real data that's brought in um, from an alumni typically and um, will bring in their own project from a company and are gaining that pro bono consulting from our current students and so it's beneficial both ways. Our teams then present to the client and those recommendations are very quickly implemented into the workplace and we get great feedback after the end of each term. Leadership development um, happens both in the classroom through the co-curricular module as well as your um, executive or sorry excuse me core course in leader leading and managing teams and then we also have an optional leadership academy which you can apply to as well and then you'll see the international study is a required component of the program you have several different options all of our international study trips are about a week long so it fits in with your professional schedule and and demands from the rest of your life but certainly is a, um, a wonderful opportunity to learn more about the particular economy in, in that destination city and country and how it fits into the global marketplace. So you can see on the other side of the slide some basics about how the program works. Classes always start at 6.30 and run till about 9.15, so it's certainly manageable. You can get to after work. You'll see people running in with their dinner, eating in class. It's, it's very um, understanding of the busyness of your day. Um, you're going to be in class two nights per week, typically Monday and Wednesday for your first year. And then once you move into electives, that can be Monday through Thursday, and even there's there are sometimes Saturday courses offered if, that, if you prefer that. Um, it's just not guaranteed all the time. But as we said, it's the cohort structure. So you come in with that incoming class, which is such an important part of your experience. But then you still have the flexibility, um, particularly in your elective time. But also, you could um, take, you can slow down if you need to in your core. You have up to five years to finish the program. But as you can see, the typical length is is 32 months, and you can accelerate in a couple of different ways and finish in as little as 24 months. So that's a, a basic overview, um, but we'll be happy to answer any questions about details of how it works, work-life balance, um, all that great part of how you manage school and life at once. One question that I think that a lot of people would say is, what if I have to take a semester off? Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, you mentioned you can take five years to finish the program, mm -hmm. but 
what does that really look like yeah. in terms of I have to take the fall, I might have to take the fall in the spring. How mm -hmm. do people get plugged back in quickly and can continue? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, there are a lot of different scenarios in, in which you could need to change your schedule a little bit. It could be um, that you have a life um, event, something's happening either positive or, or maybe not so positive and you need to take some time off of school. You'd work with your academic advisor to, um, to withdraw, just not register, and then you would work with them, they'll keep in touch with you and while you're gone and, and try to integrate you back in or, or talk about the possibility of just taking one class as opposed to completely um, not being enrolled in that term. More commonly what happens is someone will um, have a fantastic job opportunity for a short term assignment overseas or in a different city or just a major project they know they're going to need to devote a good amount of time to. So they'll either back off and take a lighter load or take um, a semester off. Another thing to keep in mind, you'll work with your career coaches that if you are planning to do a significant job search while you're a student, you can accelerate beforehand, load up on some classes and get ahead so you can take a lighter load or take no courses during the time that you're going to be focused on interviewing, um, going to company visits, working on interview practice um, so that you have that flexibility in your schedule to really make the most of your time as a student. We've also switched slides now and, and have information about the class profile, sort of what the other students would look like. Mm -hmm. um, here a lot of people want to know about GMAT, so there's an 80% range there and also the breakdown in terms of the class size, et cetera. Mm -hmm. And I would say th these remain pretty constant uh, from yeah. year to year. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we, um, we use the snapshot figure because this is kind of a general look at what you're going to see when you enter the classroom. So it's going to vary a little bit from year to year, but um, uh, these are this is essentially our goal in terms of bringing in a high quality, um, diverse classroom. And we've been able to stay pretty consistent really for the last several years. Our program is actually almost 20 years old in terms of part-time programs. That's a, a great history of excellence. Um, so, and we've been very stable in, in maintaining a, a strong class size so you have, it's kind of a critical mass so that you have enough um, n people in the room that you're going to meet people with very similar backgrounds and similar interests, but you're absolutely going to meet a lot of very different people, um, that different from yourself. And so um, it's a good mix of, of networking opportunities and friendship as well as you're going to, these are going to be your 90 new best friends. You're kind of in the trenches together working really hard to manage a lot going on in your day and so it's important to have um, a close uh, supportive network as well as um, a really challenging group of motivated people. So to change gears a little bit now, put yourselves in the shoes of being an executive, someone who has more work experience and is looking to either accelerate their career or to perhaps make a career change and, and needs that uh, Masters of Business Administration to assist in that. We have that too here at Goswana. In fact, we have two different type programs in there. So Larissa, I hope you're ready to break down the modular and the weekend format of the Executive MBA and also talk a little bit more about how that class profile uh, differs from the evening MBA population. Yeah, absolutely. So with the Executive MBA program, there's two formats. I'll tackle the easier one first. So that's the weekend Executive MBA. It's more of a traditional structure. You're in class every other Friday and Saturday, and we do have classes all day on Friday, so your employer will have to um, buy in a little bit and give you that time off, and as well as all day Saturday. There is four different classes, so four hours each. Three of those are gonna be academic, and the fourth one is what Kathleen has already mentioned. It's either going to be dedicated to management practice where you're getting um, actual projects and you're learning kind of the consulting business um, solving, problem solving skills. And then there, or it would be leadership practice. So leadership practice is an opportunity for you to hear from leaders who have been successful in the field, but also get some skills such as giving presentations to a large audience, some quick and dirty tricks of how to do that without, um, without sounding awkward. So uh, that's the structure of that program. It is a general management curriculum, so that's different from what you get in the evening program. There's very little flexibility to take electives. We do have two electives that are built into the program that you would take on Thursday nights before that Friday, Saturday. 
um, on alternating weeks two times during the course of the program but then if there's an area that you're really interested in there's certainly an opportunity to do that after you graduate so you can take executive MBA specific electives but you can also take some electives of the evening program and if your schedule permits you can also do it with a full-time program and the length of the program, it's a cohort structure, it's lockstep curriculum, so again, that's a little bit different. You come in with the same people, you go through all your classes with your same cohort, and then you graduate with the same people. So there's very little flexibility on that. Uh, for the weekend program, it's 21 months, and it starts every August, so we have one intake a year. And then with the modular format, it's a little bit more tricky. So that format, you come in for a whole week at a time. So you start on a Sunday, and you end on Saturday, and, you, and that is once a quarter. So it's really focusing in on the academic experience. You're here in class from 8 to 4.30, but because a lot of our students are traveling in from international locations as well as other locations in the U.S., usually you have teamwork and other things that are going on during those evenings. So it's really an immersion experience. There is 10 week-long uh, modules during the course of 20 months and that program starts in September. There's some electives built into that program as well during the weeks that you're here. For those of you who are in Atlanta, you can certainly take additional electives, again, with the evening or the full-time programs if you're interested in that. Uh, for the class profile, um, it is a little bit, typically a little bit more senior than the evening uh, students. So we, the average years of work experience is 14. That varies a little bit year to year and class to class. The range is from about eight years of work experience to 30 plus, so it really is flexible. We try to recruit for a diversity of perspectives. So typically what you'll find in the classroom is there's going to be um, individuals from all different functional areas. There's going to be folks from different industries, different cultural backgrounds, as I mentioned, sometimes coming from other countries and other cities here in the U.S. So it really, there's not a typical class. It, it really differs year to year on what you're going to see. Um, the, I guess the biggest thing of why somebody chooses the Executive MBA program is really to get a good understanding of all the different areas of business and get prepared for managing a whole department or a whole company. Um, so in that way it's a little bit different. So obviously uh, there is the aspect of I want to come back and get my MBA and help my career or make a change. So we've thought about that here at Gusweta and a couple of years ago uh, created a program specifically for the working professionals MBA. Uh, the full-time MBA for many years has benefited from a career management center mm -hmm. and there's actually a career management center for working professionals. It's tailored a little bit differently uh, because you may want to stay in your job or you have great opportunities there, but we also want to give career coaching. Uh, so there's a slide on this, and Larissa, would you like to explain a little bit more how it, the interworkings between EMBA, Evening, and uh, CMC for working professionals? The CMC, WP, you know, we'll, <laughs> we'll, we'll throw out all kinds of acronyms today yeah. that you can get used to once you yeah. arrive on campus. Yeah, so the Career Management Center for Working Professionals is, as J. Mike has mentioned, is a little bit different uh, in a sense that everyone's coming in with a little bit of different experiences, different needs, and looking for a more tailored experience um, in, in terms of managing their career. So there's three things that the center does. Uh, the first thing that they do is provide you with some content. So there may be a session on optimizing your LinkedIn profile, and that's something that everyone can benefit in or negotiating, excuse me, negotiating your salary. So again, that's applicable no matter if you're staying with the same company, if you're going to be um, looking for a job or you're looking to grow, a lot of these topics are relevant for everyone no matter which level uh, you're at, whether you're an evening student or an executive student. And the other thing that they do is coaching. So this is a, an individual session, typically an hour long, where you sit down face to face, sometimes on the phone. We have them here on campus. We also have them in different locations in Atlanta. That way you, can, you don't necessarily have to drive to campus every time you want to have a coaching session. And it could be very broad, um, focusing on, okay, let's create a roadmap of where I want to go and understanding how to do that. Or it can be very tactical. I have an interview tomorrow. Let's get some practice in. And the third thing that uh, the Career Management Center focuses on is uh, giving our students an opportunity to, to form connections. 
So this could be um, a session here on campus where it's a panel, say a consulting panel, where you come in and hear from the folks in the consulting field, some of the trends, some of the career paths that they have available, and then an opportunity to network with them. Or sometimes it's a little bit more tailored to what you're looking to do if it's something um, you know, of a specific field. Now the moment we've all been <laughs> waiting for, when do I uh, get the, to the computer and start filling out my application and how much time do I have left? <laughs> to do so. Uh, so I have good news and bad news for everybody out there who may be listening or, or watching this archive. Check the date on your computer because <laughs> time is running out, but there is still time remaining. So uh, Kathleen, first to you, what, what's the uh, deadlines that are coming up for evening and what do people need to know there about scholarship opportunities? Yeah, so um, the evening MBA program works on rounds as actually all three of our MBA programs now do. So we work on application rounds which means that we have a, a deadline and as long as you get everything in by that deadline you have a specific decision notification date that you'll hear back from us on and then you can very clearly plan out um, when to expect to hear from us, when we need to hear back from you about your decision. So we tried to be very clear with that. So that is one of the primary differences in the application process between our MBA programs. Um, so that's something absolutely you want to check the website and, and make sure you see. So for the evening program, we have five rounds. Right now we are, we've just wrapped up round three, and so we're looking forward to rounds four, and then our final round five is on July 9th. So there absolutely is still time to apply. Um, all admitted applicants will be considered for our merit scholarship. So there's still time to be considered for that. Um, if you're thinking about next year, uh, try to apply in the round, the earliest round in which you feel you can submit, submit your strongest application. So it's not that if you don't apply in round one, you won't get a scholarship. We really have worked hard to make sure that everything's fair and um, even and based on previous years, things like that, we know what to expect. Um, but go, it can't hurt to get it in early and then you have more time after the decision to apply or if you want to submit new materials and take a test again, something like that to um, improve your chances for scholarship, you certainly um, will benefit by having more lead time to do that. But, but June 6th and July 9th, there's still time for August 2015, so get it in. Now, Larissa, <laughs> what about the executive program? A little bit, a few more deadlines, but uh, one of them is modular only? Yes. Yeah, so not that much more time with, with the executive program. Our next deadline is coming up on June 1st. That's our biggest one. So um, if you're looking to, to start this year, I would encourage you to try to get all your materials in by uh, June 1st. I know it's coming up very quickly here. So if that doesn't work out, the next one after that is June 30th. And um, if you're looking at the modular program, because the modular format starts in September versus August, there's a little bit more time. So for that program, the last deadline is July 15th. If for some reason you miss all the deadlines, and I think that's, that's the same <laughs> thing with the, with the evening program, we do continue to review applications after those deadlines have passed. However, those are on a seat available basis. So if the class is full by that point, then you're going to have to wait till next year. But we do have some questions that uh, some folks would like to get answered and then uh, that have come in. And then also we want to make sure that uh, some of the FAQs are answered in particular. So first off, I believe this question is for both of you. Um, there is an interview requirement as part of this application. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. How should I prepare for that sure. interview? Yeah. Um, I'm happy to take that. Um, so. What I always tell people is that you're preparing for an individual conversation um, with one of the admissions staff members, typically, unless you're notified otherwise, you'll be with a staff member, possibly an alum, but um, typically you're with us. It's a one-on-one -on -one conversation, primarily about your work experience and your MBA reasoning and your MBA plans. Um, so the best way to prepare for that is, it sounds simple, but read your resume. <laughs> it's really, we want to hear your career story, your career progression and growth, and, and bring to life what's on the sheet. So we'll have your resume in front of us. We may have pre-reviewed it. We may not, um, depending on the situation. But it's important to be able to um, give us the the personal stories of 
what, how you've learned from your jobs, how your responsibility has grown, your impact on the organization, because all of that stuff that we want to know, and it will translate into your classroom experience, particularly as a working professional student, you're going to draw on that every day um, in, in classroom discussions and team conversations, things like that. Um, so one other tip I will give people is it's helpful if you've looked at our essay questions and started working on answering those, because it's a good time to start thinking about your story and talking about yourself because right now you may not be talking about yourself unless you have very patient friends you're probably not talking about yourself for an hour on end you know it doesn't go much beyond your Facebook status updates so so getting in that mindset again being able to tell your career story is going to be really helpful and then also come with your questions for us um, come with your questions about the program about the experience try to um, you know we're there as a resource as well and we always make sure there's time included to um, fill in any holes you have in terms of understanding of what you're getting into and what to expect and and do we have the courses that you are particularly interested in um, anything that you couldn't find on the website that you want to hear more about or just get our take on we're happy to answer those questions um, and make sure that you feel like you've walked away having learned something um, as we will certainly be learning a lot about you in the interview session. So one thing that I would add to, to what Kathleen has already said is with the professional accomplishments um, that you've had, a lot of the times people tend to focus on the positive as they're looking through their resume they're like, okay, this is great thing I did at this job and great thing I did at this job and that's the way that most people want to prepare. What we also want to hear is some of the challenges that you've experienced during the your progression. So think about some of the, you know, a lot of the times, first time you have managed a team could have been challenging, or maybe you've had a team in another country that you had to manage, and there's some challenges that came up with that. So I always encourage individuals to think through some of those experiences that you've had that have really um, taught you some important lessons that you can share with us, because we learn a lot from that probably will learn a lot more from the negative experiences or some of the challenges and failures that you may have had than you probably learned uh, from the leadership opportunities that were successful right away. So I encourage you to take a look at that and think through some of the uh, application of the softer skills that you've had that you can share with us. Again, it's really important that we get a deep understanding. This is one of the very few times that you get to share um, a deep story and what you're going to be bringing to the classroom as Kathleen has already said. So please make sure that you think through all of that and, and be prepared. Should we talk about what not to do in an interview? <laughs> Why not? I'm, I'm sure there's some great interesting stories. No. <laughs> uh, one other question that has come in that I think uh, you two probably face this every day and I would love to get the elevator pitch from each of you. Um, I'm trying to decide between evening and mm -hmm. IMBA. Mm -hmm. uh, how, what goes into that decision? How do I tease the two apart and decide what's mm -hmm. best for me? Sure. Um, well, probably the first question to ask yourself is, which is the best fit for me in terms of my experience level? And that's something we're happy to um, counsel people on and advise because there is some overlap in terms of just years. If you're just looking at a number of years, there's some overlap. Um, for the evening MBA, our range tends to be um, between two to three years on the low end and probably eight to ten on the high end, but our average is around five or six years of work experience. And as Larissa mentioned, um, their average is typically, I think, what, 12 for the one that and um, It's really around 14, I think, 14, for, for yeah. both programs, okay. but yeah. yes. So yeah. It, so, it's well, a little bit different. Yeah, so it, depending on the on the specific um, delivery model, but um, in terms of what's fantastic about the evening program is is that it's the working professional schedule, it's the full experience, and with that flexibility involved and the ability to specialize, and and typically it, we're um, a great fit for people who are mid and early career, so people who um, are building up to management positions or are early manager careers um, have had some demonstrated success in their career and are looking to um, accelerate or make a change. Either one is absolutely possible to do in the evening MBA program. Um, but yeah, so it's, it's, that's the first question to ask and then I'll let Larissa talk more about the benefits of the executive program. Yes, so as I mentioned already, the executive program is a general management focus, so a lot of the times if you're looking to get a broader knowledge, um, you definitely are also looking to see what your experience has been so far. So if you have 
20 years of work experience, probably the executive MBA would be a better fit than the evening program. There is an employer um, buy-in that, that's required for the executive program because you are going to be missing class. We don't require any sponsorship letters or anything like that, but you will have to take that time. So you, you have to um, have either a flexible schedule or work with your employer. A lot of the times there's ways to bring that knowledge back to the employer uh, through independent study opportunities or um, you know just what you're learning in the classroom a lot of the times is applicable. So employer support is important and, and, and if that's challenging and you're at 10 years of work experience that may be something that may or uh, may not sway you. Um, what I recommend to, to folks that come to me and say, oh, I'm really not sure, I think I can go either way, is to go visit a class. And so sit in on a class for the evening program or sit in on a class for an executive program. Usually if you're deciding between the two, you want to do both to see what it's like to be an evening student versus an executive student. And a lot of the times the, the individuals who take that advice come back and have a pretty clear idea during the class, there's breaks, so you can also talk to the current students and ask them any questions about their experience in the program, why they chose the format that they chose, and that tends to clarify things uh, very, very quickly. Mm -hmm. That's great advice. Thank you both, and <laughs> you have a wealth of knowledge and experience. We're almost out of time, but the uh, uh, one of the great things we can do here, too, with going through these chats and knowing what some of the questions may be so we can prepare frequently asked questions. So I've included these into the slide deck. Uh, I would like to take just a couple minutes, maybe one of you answer each question so mm -hmm. we can move uh, rather quickly. Uh, and then just have these on tape, if you will. Uh, you know, we send these out to participants and then also post later uh, on our YouTube channel for people to get a glimpse of. So the first frequently asked question, uh, GMAT or GRE, which mm -hmm. should I take? Uh, both <laughs> are allowed yes. now. Mm -hmm. um, who wants to take a stab at it? I'll take that one. Um, <laughs> so there's two different factors to consider. And so one is going to be yourself, and one, the other is everyone else. So the first factor for yourself, you the best thing you can do in terms of determining which test to take is to take the free practice, practice test for both of them and then compare your score. So you can take free practice tests online at both um, GMAC, which runs the GMAT test and then ETS which runs the GRE test so they have free practice tests and they also have a translator tool um, on the ETS site which you can compare your two scores um, and then go with the one that went better um, probably. The other factor everyone else meaning first of all um, Emory obviously we accept both the GMAT and GRE but double check and make sure that all the schools you're interested in applying to accept both um, before you go focus on the GRE. The other um, everyone else is also employers. There is a possibility that a future employer could want to see a test score and if you have very specific, very lofty goals, particularly in the consulting or investment banking fields, um, there still is an emphasis on the GMAT score and a preference for that. So that's just a, an FYI to keep in mind. Um, but obviously you don't want to get yourself in a situation where you spend all this time focusing on the GRE and then need a GMAT score for some other reason you didn't anticipate. Um, but for Emory, we do accept both tests with no um, preference or prejudice between the two. We just want you to do well and demonstrate your ability and, um, and your potential for success in the, in the academic program here. Great answer and another great question. Uh, there are several parts to the application process, uh, does the order I submit the application parts matter? No. So <laughs> that's an easy question. <laughs> easy There's an <laughs> easy answer. Um, you can definitely submit the application in whatever way that you would like. Some people start with an interview because they want to get a good sense of the school and they have some questions that they want to answer before they go through the application process. The online application is what actually opens your file with us and, and opens the big application process. So sometimes that's a great way to start. Uh, if you're applying for the executive MBA program only, and that's the only one that you're considering, you can also start with the GMAT GRE waiver. And so the information on that process are on our website. You can also reach out to us individually to learn a little bit more. So I would say overall, there's you can start with whatever part that you want. Sometimes people submit their transcripts and don't even apply until the following year. So any any order works works fine for us. 
another question. I believe, Kathleen, this is more geared toward your program, but are there scholarship opportunities? Sure. Um, for the evening MBA at Goizabada, we do have a limited number of merit scholarships, and those scholarships are partial awards, so they cover about a quarter of the total tuition costs, and you spread them out throughout the, the length of the program per semester. Um, you can actually accelerate the award as well if you choose to accelerate your coursework. Um, they are awarded um, using the same criteria we use for the admission decision. So we're looking at your professional experience, what you're bringing to the classroom, your previous academic success, so that's a combination of all your coursework and undergraduate and graduate if you've done that already, um, plus your test score, GMAT or GRE. And then all the extra stuff, what um, your past leadership experience, your involvement outside of work or outside of the classroom in your undergraduate time. Um, really just looking for a whole list, um, well-rounded applicants, standout applicants who we know are going to contribute a great deal to the incoming class. So there's no separate schol um, scholarship application process for the evening program. It's just um, a part of our admissions review process and you'll be notified along with the admission decision if you have been awarded um, a merit scholarship. And for the executive MBA program, there are uh, very few scholarship opportunities and tuition credits. We do have some partnerships with some organizations that also offer funding uh, for the Executive MBA program exclusively. So uh, my best recommendation without going into too much detail on this chat here is if you're interested in some additional funding, just reach out to us and we can work with you to see if anything is available. But the main point, I guess, to take away is that there's very, very limited opportunities in the EMBA program. Now, is there going to be a disadvantage if I apply later than normal? So if I'm in round five, uh, just getting my application in, is there um, a, a problem with that, mm -hmm. per se, or any sort, as I mentioned, a disadvantage? Um, for the evening MBA program, we work hard to make sure that all of our applicants are given full consideration, even if they do apply in one of the later rounds. So we've set those up um, so that there's not a difference between the rounds. The only caveat to that is that the final round, round five, does have a very fast turnaround time. So if you look at the dates, you're applying in July, you're getting your decision in late July, and then orientation starts in very early August. So that's, mm -hmm. it's fast, and it's a lot, and there's a lot to, um, it's a big adjustment anyway to go back to school, so giving yourself a little more time is helpful. And also another um, benefit to applying earlier is that you have more time to potentially update your application or, or you know, for, if you are put on the wait list, which obviously we hope you'll be admitted straight away, but if you are put on the wait list, then you have time to update your file and strengthen it and, and hopefully be admitted for that enrollment year. Um, so yeah, so there's no disadvantage in terms of a lower likelihood of being admitted, but there's certainly a time benefit to applying earlier in the application cycle. But as I said, apply in the earliest round in which you feel you can submit a strong application that you're happy with. And I would say for the executive MBA program, it's exactly the same. There's really, um, we review all the applications that come in within, during the rounds, up until the last one with equal consideration, but very similar to the evening program. If you're applying at the last um, deadline, then there's a very quick turnaround to get all your ducks in a row and get your employer buy-in, get your family um, set up for, you know, you going back to school and it's a very rigorous uh, program that we have here in both the evening and the executive format so it it becomes very challenging to get everything done but if you're ready for that then then certainly go ahead and apply and, but I would echo Kathleen's advice apply in the earliest round that you can get all your application materials in and you feel that, that that's the most competitive information when should I schedule an interview today yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now. <laughs> Um, so for the evening MBA program, we actually um, require all of our applicants to interview as part of the application process. It's important to us that we have a chance to get to know you better in person, um, not only to, to learn more about your work experience as, we, um, as you talk through your resume and, we, and learn more about your career progression, but also to make sure that, that you have all your questions answered, that you have a very clear understanding of, of of the MBA program here at Emory, what to expect, the rigor level, um, the benefits, but also the challenges, um, and what we want to see in you in terms of the admissions committee, your communication style, um, your ability to kind of 
uh, interact with other people and play well with others, that sort of thing, all those different components. But so it is important to us, so that's why we ask you to self-schedule it before the deadline. Um, don't wait for an invitation because it's not coming. Um, <laughs> we actually do blind interviews so that it's not dependent on pre-review. So schedule your interview yourself um, before the deadline and it will be included in your application file and you'll be all set. No difference in the executive MBA program, so it's 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 a very uh, similar process. So you schedule your own interview when you're uh, ready to, to to go through that. A lot, of, as I mentioned earlier, a lot of people do it as a first step in the process because they just want to get a good sense of whether they're a fit. Um, and sometimes having that conversation makes them either feel more comfortable or they decide that hey, I'm just not ready for this right now. Maybe next year or um, you know some sometime down the line. So. Schedule it early is probably the best advice that, that, that we can give. Next question, what about waiver exams and transfer credits? I could see this being pretty important. To <laughs> yeah. Um, well, I, I, I think for the waiver exams, we don't waive you out of any classes uh, in the executive program. It's a lockstep curriculum, so you have to take all the classes. Even if you took 18 accounting courses already, you're, you will be taking an accounting course with your cohort. So there's not an opportunity if you've taken a class somewhere else, even if it was graduate level, to transfer it over to our program. So. It, you know, the short answer is there, um, we don't really accept transfer credits and there's not an opportunity to waive out of a particular subject. The only waiver option that is available in the executive program only, again, is the GMAT GRE waiver. Um, for the evening MBA program, in terms of bringing in outside credits or waiving classes, it definitely is an opportunity, but it's going to be based on faculty and faculty committee approval because our faculty obviously are very proud of our program and our curriculum, and so they're a little protective of that, as you would understand. But for evening students, everyone has an opportunity to take the waiver exam for almost all of our core classes, and that exam is designed by the faculty member um, and is available online before uh, that semester. So you can take the exam if you are pa if you pass that exam, you can replace the core class with an additional elective. So it doesn't necessarily shorten the program, but it does give you more opportunities to take even more um, fantastic electives. Transfer credits are a little more complicated. Um, if you have, basically, it's only really applicable if you started an MBA program elsewhere and weren't able to finish it or, or for whatever reason, and so have credits at an MBA level that were not already used for a degree. Um, so you can submit those um, that information to the faculty committee after you've been admitted and after you've actually already enrolled. Um, you can submit that to the faculty committee and they'll review it and determine whether you'll be awarded transfer credit. And there's a, a maximum of, um, I believe, three to four courses. Um, so 12 credit hours, I believe, is the maximum on that, but it's all subject to approval. Um, after the admissions process and once you're enrolled here in school. Two more quick questions. Do you offer international travel opportunities? Yeah, for the um, evening MBA, we actually require international travel. We strongly feel that um, our graduates are, are ready to be global leaders or leaders in global enterprise. And so part of that is exposure to um, not only cultures in other countries, but also how their economy works, um, how they fit into the global marketplace. For, so for the evening program, we've designed several um, opportunities to travel abroad. All of our trips are about a week long, so it should fit into your professional schedule. You have plenty of time in advance to choose which of the several options you have. So we have annual trips that go to destinations such as the Netherlands, Brazil, and China. Um, and we also have a, an annual trip called the colloquium where the destination actually changes each year and it's um, based on input from students and faculty and is led by an Emory faculty member and so which is a fantastic opportunity that happens every spring so that destination will change recently we've been to Colombia we've been to South Africa and China UAE um, it's um, Greece and Turkey so a lot of great opportunities there and then a special social enterprise focused option in Nicaragua each January so as I said, um, you will be required, but you'll have lots of ways to um, very enjoyably fulfill that requirement. <laughs> um, in the Executive MBA program, there is also a required international colloquium. It's actually part of the Global Business Practices course that you take during the last term here uh, in the program. It is required in both the weekend and the modular format. 
The destination is typically chosen by the faculty and the dean of the program about a year into the program, so you won't know ahead of time where you're going. And uh, the destination is typically two international locations, not just one. And the length of the trip is a little bit longer. It's about 10 days. So you spend four days in one destination. There's a travel day um, and four or five days in another destination. So that is a requirement for all of our students. And uh, once the destination is chosen, and I think some of this may also apply to the evening program, but once the destination is chosen, then students can give some input on what specifically they would like to learn during that time. So even though it's an international trip, there's still a lot of learning that happens. Um, you are going to company visits, you may be visiting the embassy, there may be some uh, classes that are taught from a different university that you're sitting in on and learning from, from what they know. And the focus is really on understanding the changes that are taking place globally. So there's a focus on developing economies a lot of the times. And we try to compare two different um, economic uh, realities. So you'll usually go to two different destinations that have very different factors um, playing in, hopefully geographically close, so that way uh, you don't have to spend a whole time traveling in between. So there, um, other than that, there's unlike the evening program, there's no other opportunities that you have to travel except that international uh, colloquium. One thing I wanted to mention that we didn't talk about is in the weekend program, even though it's not international, there's another trip that's required, and that is to Washington, D.C. So we're partnered with an organization called Washington Campus, where you get to um, get a deeper understanding about the legislative process and how it impacts business in the U.S. And, and that trip is open to our modular students if they're interested in going in half the time, but it is required for our weekend executive MBA students. One more question before we sign off. I, I think it's great that we're capturing these frequently <laughs> asked questions. FAQs in web language. Uh, can I take daytime courses if my schedule allows? So they, if can I jump into a full-time class if I can get to campus on a Thursday morning, for example? Is mm -hmm. that allowed in the programs? Um, so typically, yes, but it's unusual that you would necessarily need to. So it's, it's one of those things where it's a great option to have, but you're probably not going to need to take advantage of it because so many cor elective courses are offered in the evening, and, and the first priority will go to the full-time students, the daytime students. Um, so it's easier to stay with the evening classes and you have so many options, it's not an issue at all, but you certainly could if there was a need or if you just felt that um, it was going to be really beneficial to you in one way or another. Um, but yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and again, very similar in the Executive MBA program. Most of our students take Executive MBA specific electives. Um, sometimes they'll take evening electives if there's some uh, subject that's covered that um, they're interested in in the evening class that's not um, currently offered within the Executive MBA elective set. And uh, you know, in terms of full-time classes, absolutely. Again, the preference goes to full-time students. But then if, if there is a spot available and you're interested in the topic and it's not something that you can get during um, another session or with the evening program, then yes, you can. Typically, we see that happening more post-graduation and that uh, there will be, maybe there's a project that you're working on that you really want to get a little depth on that particular topic that, that we have seen individuals come back and take it with the full-time or the evening students. Great stuff as always. So, uh, out of time, I'd like to thank uh, Larissa and Kathleen for being with us today. And for everyone here at Gazueta, especially our admissions office and uh, MBA programs, I'd like to thank you very much for tuning in, and we'll see you next time.